Welcome to the Matricon Quick Start Video Guide. In this video, you will learn about what the Matricon Dispatch Federator functionality is used for and we'll see how to quickly get it set up and running. Let's begin. Matricon Dispatch is a multifunction application. One of these functions is the Federator functionality, which lets you map various OPC UA servers to a given Matricon Dispatch node. By doing this, authorized OPC UA clients can access all the underlying OPC UA server data via a common address space facilitated by the Matricon Dispatch core. Unlike other solutions, Matricon Dispatch enables you to drill down to the address spaces of the underlying OPC UA servers that it federates. This is useful for troubleshooting purposes since different item node names may be used at different federation levels. Besides the OPC UA servers that you use, you can also federate your existing OPC Classic data sources, which you may have in your existing infrastructure. By doing this, you are able to incorporate both your new components that are most likely OPC UA based, and also your existing infrastructure. You can do this by using the Matricon OPC UA Tunneler product, which allows you to map the OPC Classic components into OPC UA ones. Matricon Dispatch also supports multi-level federation. This allows you to bring multiple dispatch nodes into a more complex hierarchy where different dispatch nodes federate different data sources. As well, they can federate each other. In this demonstration, we will cover two scenarios. First, we will take a look at a typical Matricon Dispatch federator configuration where you have an OPC UA client accessing multiple OPC UA servers down below. As such, we will show you how to set up the certificate permissions both between the OPC UA client and Matricon Dispatch, as well as between Matricon Dispatch and underlying OPC UA servers. In the second scenario, we will cover how to set up the link between two different Matricon Dispatch cores so that one can federate the other. This will be particularly useful in another video where we cover the Firebridge functionality to go across different firewalls. In this video, we will strictly use two dispatch nodes without a firewall between them. So let's get started. Okay. We are looking at OPC UA Explorer, and we will be trying to connect to a new server. We're going to put in just localhost. It's a full copy of dispatch. We are required to connect to the dispatch in order to configure it. So first, we must get this connected from an OPC client, in this case, Explorer. And then we will be using UA Explorer to configure dispatch. We use 256 sign and encrypt. This is going to fail because we have not set our certificates yet. We'll open up the location for the rejected certificates, which is here. And this is the certificate that we want. Um, just to confirm that, we'll open it up, take a look at the details. And we can see right here, Major Gun OPC UA Explorer on this machine, Operation South. We'll close that, and we'll bring up the Trusted Certificate folder. Simply drag and drop. Refresh both screens, make sure we don't have another one show up for some reason. And then go back here and click on Connect. We will now connect. So we can see we have a root dev link, and we have some configuration items or folders that we can look at, data sources. We haven't configured anything yet um, necessarily for federation. So what we'll do next is we'll go into this gear, which will bring us into the dispatch configuration. Likewise, we can go into here and click configure as well. And we want to configure some federator data sources. Now there is one by default set up, which is just a simulation item. We're going to go through and set up a couple more. 
data sources. So we're choosing a UA data source. I do have a local copy of a UA server running as well. So this will be what this guy is. And I'm going to create another one, which is a wrapped copy of a simulation server, of a classic simulation server. And so I will put this as UA Tunneler Connection. This is just naming and getting it set up. These gears here is going to let us do the configurations. So for the UA server, I'm just going to go in here real quick and do a manual search. Um, for this one, actually, we can just do it this way. We'll just go localhost. I have it set up on port 55001. We click on find, we'll find it here. And then we just drill down into it. I'm going to use a none certification on this one, or us encryption and signing on this one. Set it as anonymous, set it as enabled, and apply that. We should see that go to good. And we're good there. Close this one. Uh, tunneler is going to be the same. We'll have to search for that on, this is again local host copy uh, on a different port, which is 21381. We search for that and we'll find our wrapper. And we're going to use uh, none and none again on this one. So we will use apply. For simplicity's sake, we're going to stay on none none sign and encrypt. Uh, obviously, you can do multiple different ways of sign and encrypt through Tunneler. You can set that as well. And we do have another video about configuring the UA wrapper and Tunneler components. So we're going to apply this, and it's good. So we know that we're connected. Close this down. Now that we have our federated sources, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the UA Explorer and we're going to just do a quick rebrowse to ensure that we've picked up all the configuration changes. Now we'll be able to drill down into our data sources. And as you see, here's the simulated one that's built in to the product, and here is the UA server that we. Um, uh, added in. So we'll just take a quick look at this one. This one has got a static amount of tags in it that we use for showing um, a lot of data at once. So we'll just grab a bunch of these and drag them in. We can see that they're working. We have some value changes here. And those are updating just fine. So then we'll go up to the other data source here real quick. And we'll show that as well for the UA Tunneler. This one we're going to dig down a little bit deeper. And we're going to go to simulation items. Grab a couple of these randoms. I'll put a Boolean in there. Real 4. And uh, I don't know, in 4. <clears throat> I'm also going to put a bucket brigade, which is a it's a holding uh, holding register. I was playing with that earlier, and it has a 66 in there. So we'll just use that to show uh, that we can change data and see it move its way through the federated sources. So I'm just going to open up OPC Explorer right now, which is connected to that one. Change the value, and we will see that propagated over to here. So that's just connected to the classic OPC server that we had um, wrapped up. The second part of this is going to be showing the connection to the southern portion of this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, use another dispatch and we're going to connect it to this dispatch to show the aggregated dispatches. So I'll bring that over to the screen. So we're on the uh, north side now of the connection, and uh, we've already done the quick discovery of the, the dispatch on the north side, and we've already connected to that and done the certificates 
uh, as we did on the other side. So don't need to redo that again. So we're just going to simply connect to this dispatch and we're going to go in and we're going to configure this. Uh, likewise, we've done the same thing on the other side for the federated um, connections over there. But in this time, when we set up this uh, the source, we go in here, we're going to use the IP address and port of the um, south dispatch, which is IP address 208. And uh, just to quickly confirm that, here we go, 208 over here. And you can see we have this other uh, certificate that was being rejected earlier. So what's happening here is that this batch is trying to connect to this dispatch, and it is uh, obviously doesn't have the certificate in the trusted portion, so it won't connect. So we'll move this over here real quick, and we'll go back to uh, 209 on the north side, and this will now be good. So now we're connected and this federated source will be good. We will be able to browse to the south through the north. So I'm just gonna do a quick rebrowse here so that it gets updated with everything. Go back to the dispatch configuration into sources, and we can see our two pieces here now, just to refresh. There, we have the dispatch south. I didn't show you when I made that, but that is what we're connecting through. Dispatch south is set, dispatch north is set to connect the dispatch south. And if we drill into this one, look into our data path, we'll see our objects as well. And we should see right away here. I might have to do a quick rebrowse on this one. And when you see here, as we drill down, we get the data into the objects and go to our data sources here, and we will see the different pieces that we were uh, configuring. And the UA server was the one that we had a large tag base in. So we will go into that one real quick. This is in the first folder here. I believe we grabbed the first 13 tags, so we'll just grab the same ones just to show that those are also good coming across the network. We got good statuses on those. And we will go into the UA Tunneler connection. Grab this one here. And uh, this one, we had a couple of randoms that were in there. I'll do two again, or I think it was two, real four. But more importantly, I'm going to grab the Bucket Brigade one which was an int one. It should be sitting at 88 at the moment, which it is. And I'm just gonna quickly sneak back to the south here and we'll just change this to a final 99. Apply that across and if I get there quick enough, which I didn't, it'll already have been changed. So then we can see that it's moved the data all the way across. And that's, uh, that's showing all the federated sources from a single local copy and then into a aggregated across multiple dispatches. Thank you.